While preparing for a game, have you ever had the need to make a quick token but didn't want to go through all the rigmarole of downloading and learning a program, or just wish you could throw something together real quick so that way you could get back to planning? That's why I made this video an in-depth look at a web-based program that once you understand, you'll be able to make whatever you need on the fly. We'll be going through all of the little bits of using Roll Advantage's web-based token stamp 2 program that allows you to craft and create tokens right in your browser, download them, and then use them in whatever virtual tabletop you're using. The link to Token Stamp 2 is in the description, along with timestamps, so you can follow along or you can jump around to wherever you need to go. I'm going to try to keep this as simple and quick as possible, but I also try to cover all the basics, so if you get stuck on something, you have a place to come back to and figure it all out. As a little extra at the end, I went over how to make masks using MS Paint, so that way if you find token borders online or you purchase some and they don't have masks, you can go ahead and make your own masks using MS Paint stuff that you already have. No extra downloading, just use what you got. Also down in the description, I added my Roll20 Marketplace where I have pre-made tokens and token borders with masks included that you can download and use on whatever virtual tabletop you're using. Now that we got that out of the way, let's jump over to Token Stamp and get this party started. So the first thing we're going to touch up on is the workspace, what all these buttons do up here at the top, and what the workspace itself here does, and what the preview is for and kind of how all of these items work together. First thing we're going to do though is you're either going to drop an image in, so you can drag and drop it from a file, or we can go and choose an image. I'm going to go ahead and choose an image. I've got one right here. Ice Guard. This is what we'll be using, or at least I'll be using. And this will pop in there, and that gives us a good look at the preview over here. And this is our workspace itself. This is where we'll be able to play around with the image. Um, and this will be a preview of what the token actually looks like. So within the workspace is what we can do is we can rotate the image, move it around to whatever we need here. You can adjust this image however you need it. Like if you just want the eye or if you need to make it small or wanted to add some text or anything around it, you can do that as well. For this, I will go ahead ahead and just pop this in here and if we look at the preview here the image itself sits inside of the token border here and on the outside we have these checkers these checkers are going to be what is transparent so whenever this is saved out we will have the token here with the border and it will be a circle whenever you import it into a virtual tabletop such as roll 20. so now that we got these couple of little things out of the way and the workspace kind of hammered out along with the preview we'll go up here to the bar of options that they have of uh, things that we can play around with we will go ahead and start with the token border itself uh, we can set it to no token border which will just spit out images based off of the size and how big you make them so that way you could cut them down you could get little squares with just uh, faces and images or whatever any of these other crazy token borders that, that you would like they've got a lot of options here so you might not necessarily even need a border pack or even find anything online you could literally just populate everything with images that you like along with these borders so we'll go ahead and we'll just use the one that it sets the base at and we'll resize our image here make sure everything is working how we want it all right with the border open like this uh, we can't necessarily just click off of it and shut it so we'll have to go up here and click it again and that will free up our workspace here get us back to where we're at this next one is the overlay so uh, right now it's set to nothing uh, depending on what we want though, we can change the overlay. There's like a dark shadowy overlay, um, a couple of different other overlays here. I personally don't use the overlay, but if you wanted to, you could. The strong light fade right here, this second one, is one that is going to be affected by your overlay tint here though. So if you do have this one selected, this will affect that overlay that is going on over your token. So you can see it heavily in the workspace. In the token preview, it's a little bit more blended. Changing the opacity up will make it stand out. 
um, and saturate more of whatever the overlay tint is right here. So we'll go ahead and sl uh, select the overlay tint. Um, and then from there, depending on what colors you choose is depending on what that tint is. So if you were looking for more of like a dark blue or like a dark red or whatever, what have you, whatever you're looking for, uh, this can give you options to edit the image that you find or you would like to use. Uh, we'll go ahead and we will close both of these. Well, first we will set this just back to a base. So that way we are working with the default here. Uh, our next one is going to be border tint. This works just like the overlay tint, but for your border. So if we select the border tint and whatever color we choose here is going to basically color your border. So, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's nothing too crazy there. If you do have a custom border that you're using though, uh, I would recommend moving your border tint to white. That will just make sure that it doesn't get any extra color added to it. On the other hand, if you would like that border to be a different color, this is kind of where you can play around with that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll just use sort of a, a lighter blue here. Just give us something to kind of play with. Some, maybe something that looks a little bit more icy. Next is background color. Background color is going to be this color here that is on our workspace. It doesn't show up around here too much if you're using a border itself. But let's say your image was a little bit smaller and you did have some of the background showing around your image. This is where your background color would come into play. So here we could go and we could change it to maybe a blue, like a super icy blue or something like that, or maybe some red if we wanted it to be like bad guy or something. That just gives you more options to kind of play around with whenever you're creating your custom tokens here. We will go ahead though and we will change it back to something neutral for a workspace and then we're gonna resize up our image here so that way we have a clean cut token text color that is not going to do anything unless we hit the text box here first so we'll go ahead and we will add a text box now that we have that text box in there we will be able to move it around in the workspace and it will show up in our preview over here it works very similar to everything else uh, if it is outside of the token border it will not show up so if we go in here, we can put this here and signify that maybe that this is the first ice guard, but we do not want to use yellow is what we would do is we would then go to our text color up here. And just like all the other color wheels, we can go in here and adjust whatever color we need it to be. So now that we got that, it will show up here in our preview. Border opacity is going to be another one that's very specific. If you're trying to use it, what it's going to do is essentially if you drop it down, you you will notice on your workspace that it doesn't change, but over here in our preview, the border now is a much more transparent. One will be fully visible, where if you dropped it down all the way to zero, that will be completely invisible. So play around with that if you need that for any specific reason. Our last one that we'll be talking about is the scale itself. This one we will have to play around with in one part of the video. What the scale does is the scale will affect the preview directly. And the preview is what is actually going to be saved out. So if we drop the scale down, we'll notice that the preview itself is getting smaller and smaller. And it looks like that our text there does not like that too much. So we'll go ahead and delete the text first, and then we will zoom it out um, and play around with that. So that's something good to know as well. If you're going to be adding text to your image, add text. Oh, it doesn't like that either. So if you're going to be adding, if you're going to be scaling, don't add your text or add your text, export it, bring it back in, do it all again. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of different things that we can play around with here. This is kind of just a run through to kind of get you guys knowing what's going on. Uh, once we're all said and done, uh, we will go down here and we will click the download button. What that will do is whatever browser you're using and how if you have your download set up, it will save it there. We can go ahead and open this up. And if we look at it, we have our transparency all set up. A nice little backdrop there. Looking pretty good. So now that we got the basics out of the way, we'll go ahead and start using custom borders. First things first, we'll go down here and we will choose our image or drag and drop an image that you want to use. We'll use the ice guard again size it up. The masking layer is going to be pulled from the border 
the border that we have chosen up here. So we'll go ahead and keep that for now. We will go in and we will set our custom border down here. The custom border, like I said, is going to be a 300 by 300, which will fit right over the existing border that is there. This is supposed to be blue. The border tint is the thing that is causing that to look less blue than we want it to be. So we will go ahead and take the border tint and change that to white. And that is showing up just how we need it in our workspace. Everything's looking good there. Now, the problem we have is that the border itself is getting cut off here on the edges of our preview. So we'll have to go in and we will have to adjust with the scale here. We'll drop it down to where it almost fits. So it fits somewhere in between 0.9 and 0.8 we will go ahead and change it to 8.5 give us a little bit of barrier there um, the reason we do this is because if I preview and look at the border itself the border that I am using has a little bit of a shadow on it we want to make sure that we keep this edge with enough transparency there to keep that shadow alive if it runs too close to the edge here a lot of this shadow would get cut off at the uh, top bottom left and right of the image itself it is just as easy as that from there we will go ahead and we will hit our download button down here and if we look at the test it is good to go we have the shadow here the shadow is also cast onto the token itself so it looks like it's kind of sticking up and it is literally that easy once you figure out how everything works up here at the top and all these buttons you can make whatever you need easy peasy we will now go over what will happen if we're using a border that is larger or the mask doesn't the masks that the program have up here that exists within all of these borders it does not fit the border that you're using so the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll insert this image here we will then go ahead down here and add our custom border the custom border we're going to be using now is a 600 by 600 pixel image versus the 300 by 300 pixel image that we used in the previous one so we'll open this one up and as you can see we've already got issues this is double the size taking up way more space than the original one that we have which big enough to where we have to adjust our image to fit around uh, we're also getting that issue that i was talking about where the border itself is getting colored uh, this should be silver and blue, and the reason why it's getting colored is because of our border tint. So we'll go ahead and we'll clean that up as well. Move that border tint all the way over there. Give us a nice little white there that will clean all of that up. Uh, but the problem is, if we look over here in our preview, we don't see the border. Uh, the face is not, it, it just isn't matching up to what, you know, we're trying to get here. So is what we'll do is we will play with our scale again, and we will drop that down until we get our border visible. Uh, as we can see, the border is much bigger. So we're going to be looking at between 0.5 and 0.4. Um, we will go ahead and we will try 0.42, which should work for us. That will give us enough of a lip here for the shadow to be cast from the token border. That should look good. Uh, I mean, we could export like this, but again, the checker pattern here and here are going to be transparent and you know that's not what we're going for so is what we'll do is we'll set a custom mask now the custom mask can either be a black and white file so whatever is white will show up and be non-transparent and whatever is black will be transparent or we can be using a png file that already has a mask built into it so for instance if we were to take a look at both of these real quick through preview you can see right here how the transparency is visible how there's like that blue here and then we've got the sheer white there that sheer white is going to effectively be our uh, visible item whereas the transparency out here is going to be invisible we will go ahead and we will use the black and white mask here and whenever we put that one in it cuts off exactly where we needed to they got rid of those corners for us you can go ahead and hit download and that will open up our file here 
and everything is good to go. Now we're going to step back real quick. We are going to go ahead and we are going to maybe assume that you found a cool border, but you don't necessarily have a custom mask that you can use or you're not sure what size you should be using. It is as easy as opening it up in paint. And I'm actually going to go ahead and show you how to make a custom mask that will fit for this situation. We'll go ahead and we are just going to open up paint. Any software will work for this because all we're going to be doing is making one of those black and white masks. So I'm going to go to where I have the border saved. So we're going to be using the 600 by 600 border here. And we will assume that I do not have either of these files. The only file that I have right now is this border here. And that's it. This gives us a good starting point of knowing where we need to paint white and where we need to paint black. So we definitely want anything outside of the circle to be transparent and we want everything inside of the circle to be visible. So we're going to use the oval here in shapes. Uh, we are going to have color one as black and color two as white. With this method, we want it to be black and white. We do not want any grayscale. We, we do want to make sure that we have a solid colored fill here though. So under our outline, we have fill. We want to set that to solid color. Now is what that's going to do is our outline is going to be black. Our fill is going to be white. We will go and click at the top left and while we're dragging, so this is a mouse click one, click and drag and then hold shift. As soon as we hold shift and move the mouse, it will create a perfect circle. We let go of everything and we now have this perfect circle that we can kind of line up in the center. This doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to make sure that it's inside of the border itself while having some of the border's edge outside of the black here. We just want to make sure that this interior is completely filled and we do have a little bit of a gap here to work with. Now this next part can be a little time consuming. What we'll do is we will go ahead and we will f color the rest of this black. Um, we can cheat a little bit, use our color painter here, kind of give us a good start and we'll have to paint all of this black, which I'm going to do real quick here. Now that we got that all filled in, got a couple of pieces here we gotta clean up, but we don't have that. We can go ahead and we will save as. Make sure you file save as. This can be PNG, JPEG, whatever you need to do. Um, but we're going to save this as whatever file name we had and you can put mass and hit OK. Now we should be good. So we go back to token stamp two and we are going to set custom mask and we are going to use this one, which is the one that we made the 600 by 600 mask, which is a copy of that that we filled in. And whenever we use that, it cuts it exactly how we need to. And when we hit download, it works exactly how it was supposed to. And we have a mask that now fits this token border. So if you do need a custom mask, you can actually make one from the token border itself and it will fit. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate your support. And if you're using my token sets, thank you ever so much. You're helping me out more than you could ever know. If you need a little bit more customization than what Token Stamp 2 has to offer, I will also be doing one of these videos about GIMP to support token makers. So toss me a like to keep me going. Subscribe to keep yourself in the loop when new stuff like this comes out. And as always, may the baddies be butthurt and the dice ever roll in your favor.